Get in your hole. Get in the hole. Hey, it's Steve. This is entering into space. And I'm also entering into a makeshift redneck hooch just to keep the wind off this big boy. He's a freaking beast, man. What the heck? So I figured I would do a little video on what I love and hate about this gigantic 10 inch Newtonian. And I figured since everybody was jumping on the supernova bandwagon, I would maybe try that too, I guess. Maybe tonight, get a little picture of it supernovas who cares yeah and ha 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 yeah and so anyway it's been like completely freaking rainy forever now and I haven't been out in the backyard and as you can tell I've had to build like this little windbreak around this thing because it's so freaking big and my poor little mount bless its heart can barely keep up with it so like I was saying we're gonna to try to get a little bit of the uh, supernova at M101 tonight. You know, just for the old craps and laughs. And uh, kind of go through what I love and hate about this big ass scope. So first off, like I talked about in the setup video, you know, the mounts, the rings, they needed some tweaking. Um, they were pretty loose, so I had to put some pads in there to kind of uh, Grip it a little tighter. And then something else that I'm fighting with, it's minuscule, minuscule, um, but it is frustrating. Is Are the veins up here? There's something's wrong with them. I mean, they're this way and they're this way, but guess what? When I shoot really bright stars, I kind of, my horizontal star spikes, they're like this, pinchers. I crush your nose. Wait, I crush your nose. Yeah, kind of like that. And I haven't really even dove into that. Uh, collimation. Collimation is a fickle thing. It really is. But once I got it dialed in, after much trial and error, uh, typically I just have to do a little business in the back end. So another pretty cool feature is this big ass scope comes with, wait, wait for it, comes with a, a fan. And that is to equalize the mirror. I guess the mirror might have some warp from being inside, but the scope pretty much stays out on the patio, so it's pretty well ambient most of the time. And the ASI Air Pro actually has four 12 volt outlets. And one of them, I have run a cable all the way back to the fan, so no more batteries. And like I said, collimation has been pretty much just a spot check on the primary mirror, very little uh, uh, tweaking on the secondary mirror. Um, but one thing I have to do is put a little hula skirt on the back of it. Yeah, and the reason I have to put a little hula skirt on the back of it, which is part of my girlfriend's leggings, thank you very much, honey bunny, is because this scope has a tremendous amount of light leak. The back end of the scope right here, this gap, I don't know if you can see it here on the camera, this gap right here, uh, yeah, light just pours in here and will screw up your flat frames and your dark frames and every other kind of frame. So I keep it on all the time. So what else do we have going on here in the business end of this? Like I said, the ASI Air Plus, 
The Plus is a great addition to the Pro. The only thing I don't like about the Plus is the fact that it does not save your flat exposure links. So if you go in there and you program in all your flats and you take a whole crap load of them, that's great. But guess what? When you go to take flat darks, it auto populates 300 seconds. Why do you do that? ZWO. Anyway, so then you know what you have to do. The only thing I can figure out how to do is to have the old trusty number two pencil and a notepad to write down your flat exposures. And you have to get the flat exposures up because guess what? I have no idea how to put in 4,000 milliseconds. But I'm happy, I really am. This is happy. I really love the scope. Anyway, so you have to do whatever you gotta do to get those flat lengths up to like one or two seconds on at least your luminance, which means being creative. That's what we do. We're creative here in this hobby. So what else we got? We've got the ASI 290. We've got the Ascar OAG. All that is mega dialed in. We've got a mystery camera. Yeah, no, it's not a mystery. It's the 533mm Pro. I upgraded cameras. And then I've upgraded another camera to be continued. And let me just tell you guys something. If you are out there right now and you are got an RC or you've got a 2000 millimeter Edge HD and you've reduced it down or you, you're, you're just fighting with F10 or F7 and you want some focal length but you still want some fastest boy, you want some speed, here it is. This is the best freaking combo I've ever had in scope, camera, combination. 10 inch aperture, F3.9, uh, a small sensor, square sensor in the 533mm Pro. Trust me, my first six minute sub of oxygen on the Crescent Nebula, complete shell, blown away. But one thing you're gonna need that I had to add to this camera. As you can tell, I've got this little extra, I've got like a 12 volt power splitter, boink, right here, boink. Uh, one power cable runs to the camera, and one power cable runs to up here to do something. What? It's the little dew heater strip for the ZWO cameras, and it is much needed here in Florida. Talk a lot with my hands, don't I? So what's my overview of this scope? After taking quite a few pictures, I love it. Is it worth the $800? Yes. Could they have done a better job in the factory? Probably. But guess what? If you're gonna pay for a scope that's personally put together and not on an assembly line, $5,000. If you're gonna get a really good scope that you gotta do some work on, $1,000. Are you gonna get a ton of signal per sub? Yes, you are. Do you wanna crop in and really reduce the apparent uh, field of view and increase the apparent focal length 533 mm pro oh and one more thing i almost forgot you know when you've got a big newtonian like this you've got to pull the camera off to do collimation dry to collimation uh, when you pull the camera off and you put it back on you have a problem with rotation you know and if you're in the middle of a project and you're shooting uh, a bunch of images night after night after night and let's say you rotate that camera when you put it back in your images could start doing this and you had the big dreaded black triangles in your sub or in your master frames. Uh, so I've come up with a manual rotator that, sorry guys, but it's pretty advanced. It's pretty technical and I'm gonna pre-apologize. I hope you guys can follow along. I'll do the best I can to explain it. And let me show you what it is. Here, masking tape, yeah. So what you do is you take a piece of masking tape and you put it across all of this and you press it in real nice like that and then right we're here where it separates right here at the uh, uh, coma corrector you just cut it and then you just line that back up that to that when you put the camera back in leave any questions down below i know it was quick to explain that sorry but works every time so let's uh let's let it get dark there's very few clouds out tonight i think it's i got like one night and I'm gonna to try to get a few subs on M101. I've been imaging the crap out of that galaxy, and here's the crazy thing to get something that I'm gonna share with you guys later. 
and then something else happened and you talk about a freaking uh what is it stolen thunder yeah anyway so if you guys are really good i'll jump over here on the asi air pro about nine o'clock tonight and we'll check out a first sub of m101 with apparently this uh freaking supernova that it's got i guess um yeah All right, let's get over here to the ASI Air app. And one thing about the ASI Air, ooh, one thing about the ASI Air Plus is you constantly have to go in here and set the temperature. Defaults to zero, or like minus 10. I like to push that cooling, that tech cooler, I like to push it, push it hard. Anyway, well, let's go back, that was kind of crazy. Uh, so let's take, a two second exposure and we are set on luminance so let's take a two second exposure see what our stars look like see if we're in focus or not and yes we are well just look at that all right so let's go over here we're going to tap the preview uh, we're going to go to polar alignment and we're gonna leave it in two seconds. Now, one thing before I do that, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to preview. I'm gonna bring up my mount controls. I'm gonna touch the speed button here. I'm gonna increase it up. Can you even see what I'm doing? Can you? Um, anyway, I'm gonna slew the scope to the east. Just a little bit. And believe it or not, I still can polar line. I don't have to be pointing at Polaris. I think if I had trees in the way, I'd still be fine. That's pretty cool. Uh, but the reason I'm doing this is because I've got this little tarp thing around my scope now, and I have to see up of it. So anyway, I've slid to the east slightly. I'm gonna go back in here to preview, polar align, hit the play button, and let it do its thing. We're gonna hit next, and let the mount rotate. Let it rotate 60 degrees. You like that light right in your face? In your face. All right, so we are rotated. We're gonna hit the let's go button. We're gonna to touch auto. And it's going to refresh and we are way out. So we need to go to the west on the azimuth. Our altitude's pretty good. Now, since I'm at such a long focal length at a thousand millimeters, you don't have to move this very much. And you definitely got to watch the numbers. Uh, if you try to go by uh, the little the bullseye, even those smiley faces, uh, that'll lie to you. Got to go by the numbers. So we're getting closer now. Ooh. Might have ever shot it there. I like to let that thing refresh a couple times because the first refresh isn't as accurate as the second refresh. Okay, let's get it one more time. Ooh, man, I think I overshot it. I think I overshot it. I overshot it, Captain. Give it a little nudge. Okay. So we're gonna hit the finish and we're gonna touch our mount icon here. I have to tell you what I'm touching. I know it sounds weird. Just have to. And I'm going to hit the start. And I'm going to say go to home. All right. So we can get to our target in a couple ways. So we can either look for it by going to back to preview. In a little um, search where it says M13. We can go down here and click those little three little dots to get some selections here. We can go to messier objects and then we can scroll to M101. But the other cool thing we could do is go to our planetarium and pan back out. And go here and find the Big Dipper. There she is. So, Al-Qaeda, Al what is it? Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda. Where'd you go, M101? You're right here. 
right where the circle is. There you go. M101. Because I'm using off axis guider, I had to go right about here. That's why I don't want to search for it um, by the messier designation because I have to be just a little offset. So I like that. So all I got to do is hit go to. And while it's slewing, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, you might be able to see it. We're going to back out, we're going to watch it plate solve. Okay, well, I can already see it, what I think it is. Uh, so let's go over here to our guide. Let's touch that thing. <laughs> let's hit the little arrows, chasing the arrows, the yin and yang, and that will start a loop. So yeah, that's about what I expected. Not a lot of stars, so I, I think I'm in a good position. So just for the heck of it, let's drop down here and hit that exposure. Let's do a 60 second exposure and see what we can see. So once we get this little supernova out of our system, what I'll do is I'll run an autofocus. I'll go on the patio because it's kind of buggy out here. I'll run an autofocus and then I will do guide calibration and then we'll do a little auto run and we'll take uh, we'll take some three minute exposures we'll add them to our uh, 94 hour project that we're on Shh, don't say anything oh well, so we're coming up on five seconds here let's see what we got all right well there it is ah, dang it. did you see that that was huge oh there it is the supernova cool all right, well, let's get out of these bugs. Let's go on the patio, and uh, let's adjourn to the patio, and, uh, and check out a three-minute sub. Okay, so cool. Uh, we're gonna go over here to let's let's do a focus first. I like to focus since I'm using off-axis guider before I do guide, guiding calibration. Uh, so what I like to do is run an autofocus before I do a guide calibration. So we're going to come over here, um, just hit autofocus there, and since we're doing a loom, it should go pretty quick, because I think I have it set to like five seconds. Let's see how good our stars are too, because I did not collimate. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. It's a nice round circle. I think I can live with that circle. It's not too bad. It's a little blown out on one side, but I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so we're getting back down to a focus point. Uh, and since we're at a longer focal length, our HFR is going to be pretty higher. It's going to be higher than it would be if we were using like an APO uh, wider field. Uh, we should see like a 3.6, 3.8 would be a good focus number. So we're going back out of focus. And what the ASI Air does is it will do this kind of a rough focus and then it, it'll run like a fine tune to find the perfect focus point. So now it's running a fine tune focus. Stars look pretty sharp. Yeah, 3.87. Man, was I good? It's like I've done this before. Ooh, 3.3. Good gravy. I mean, we're getting down there. Yeah, and then we're gonna bump back up a little bit. All right, so 3.53 is our focus point. Uh, so we're gonna turn off the focuser by touching that. We're going to, we're gonna touch the guide tab on the left-hand side. Go back into the guiding here, and those are stars. So we're doing a loop. So this little crosshair here in the middle, we're going to hit it, and now it's going to do a calibration. So the double arrows facing each other, having a little face-off out here. Let's touch that back out. Preview, and we're going to go to auto run, and we're going to set up an auto run here. Oh crap! I don't want to start it. Wow, what a hell of a run there, darks. Go in here, uh, we want the type of exposure as a light. So it must have been taking flat darks. Um, we can either manually enter in or do this little slider here and get to 180 seconds. We're going to do three minutes. It's probably going to be blown out, but whatever. Uh, we're going to do loom. Uh, global gain, yes. And we're going to repeat that uh, a bunch of times. We're going to repeat that. How many times? I don't know. 
Let's repeat it 40 times. 43 minute subs. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. That says, uh, estimated time, two hours. Okay, so it's telling me uh, one hour. That should get a pretty good image to add to my other image. Uh, so let's hit the arrow. Oh, let's go down here. We want to, yes, we do want to go to home position. Meridian flip is on. And we're guiding. Look at that. We're guiding. We're guiding pretty good, too. Look at that. Uh, so let's go ahead and start our exposure. Confirm. Dang it. So this is where I get aggravated because you know what was selected on there was do an autofocus before plan start. I didn't untick that. So now, you know what I'm doing again? Autofocusing. Rats. Okay, we're pretty close here to a three minute reveal. Look at that guiding, 0.55. <laughs> Oh, I don't even know what that was. Anyway, six seconds away. Pretty, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. It's down a little quicker here on the patio. Dang. Let's turn off. Zoom in. And there it is. Wow. That is super bright. Heck yeah. Well, that, my friends, is an F4 sub from 10 inches of aperture with the 533 monochrome camera. Um, pretty good. Let's check that little star down here. Yep. Stars look good. Let's do a detect. 2.53 we got nice stars look at all those twos yeah baby uh yeah so i'm pretty excited i'm gonna take a bunch of these i'm gonna add it to my other project i'm working on and then uh in about an hour i'm gonna totally swap scopes new camera can't tell you what that is it's a secret uh, but obviously i will do a video because it's probably the coolest camera i've ever owned so besides the 533 so anyway, um, yeah, appreciate you guys following me out in the backyard. I know it's been a while. I don't get out there much, but I'm going to try to do some more. I'll do some more processing videos, too. I think you're sick of this light, right? I wouldn't be like that. Hi. As always, uh, wish you clear skies and definitely clear minds. Until next time, thanks for watching.